uh, Mick Box, if you're a heap and uh, you're watching, ask Mick. And I have a question here from Niels Henrik Tegan from Tonsberg in Norway. And his question is, I've been a Uriah Heap fan for almost 50 years and I've seen the band live on numerous occasions. The first album I ever bought was Look At Yourself. Thank you very much, my friend. And became an avid fan of the band from that moment. Thank you again. In my opinion, I think that the song Look At Yourself is one of the greatest rock songs ever made and stands the test of time like a rock. Um, I agree with you there. I agree. It's, it's a great song. The fantastic percussions of Ossie Bisa is the icing on the cake on the song. And it's still, after nearly 50 years, give me enormous pleasure to listen to. And I'm glad to hear that. My question is, how did the cooperation with Ossie Bisa come about? And how was it to work with them in the studio? Did you have them on stage with you back in the 70s? Or was it just a one-off with the 2004 Magician's Birthday Party? Well, well, thanks very much for all your comments on Look At Yourself. Yeah, it's a great song. We still play it to this day on stage. And we've actually put a, a jam where the Ossie Bisa bit was to... Uh, to elongate it and I have a good old workout which is good uh, so I really enjoy letting loose on the guitar um, <clears throat> now Ossie Beast were our stable mates um, or our label mates I should say as well um, with Bronze Records so um, they were on the same label as us so it was it was an obvious thing that when we got into a percussive thing at the end of it on recording the, 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 the song we recorded the song first and then we went into this sort of percussive thing just as a jam sort of thing and then we started building on it and speeding up, and it was really, really cool. And then we come up with the idea of actually getting Ossibisa in, because, you know, they've got all the, uh, the unique drums that they use and stuff, you know. And um, so we invited them down, and they went, oh, yeah, fantastic. They came down to the studio. And it was quite funny, actually. They came down, and um, they set up all the drums. We got all the sounds right. And then we just played in the track, and it, we, took, we took virtually the first take. But they didn't realise how fast the track was going to go towards the end and nobody had told them. So we just let them get into the groove, they're getting a nice groove, and it's getting faster and faster, and their eyes were popping out of their head, getting faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And then the, the beads of sweat coming off, of, uh, it was amazing, it was a great fun. But that's the take we took, because it was just really, really cool. Now, we never um, had them back on stage with us um, at all in the 70s, but um, when we did the Magician's Birthday thing in 2004, as you say, we invited them up, and it was a great thrill to see all the guys up there again. And, once again, we had a great time with them and uh, they were like family, you know, because uh, we were very close to each other on, on, on the label. We always saw them in the record uh, record company and stuff like that all the time. And uh, it, it was good fun. Yeah, it was a really, really good time there. And uh, I think it really made the ending of the song um, very interesting, which was good. Job done. Thanks a lot, mate. Bye for now. I've got the sun and the moon.